Hello and welcome to Flavors of India. My name is Radhika Srilashkar and I'm a senior at Pittsford Sutherland High School. I'm Rohan Vyas and I'm a senior at McQuay Jesuit High School. And we're both members of the IHM committee who are leading this ex exhibit, thanks to the support of our community. Welcome to Flavors of India, presented by the India Heritage Museum at the Luthra Heritage Center, near the India Community Center. Today, we'll be presenting our sixth and last of a six-part virtual series displaying different foods from various regions of India. To end this exhibit on a sweet note, we decided to show you some desserts from India made for various holidays celebrated throughout the year, such as kulfi, burfi, which is nut fudge, feel good, and a drink made from kokum. With digital, digital media at our fingertips, Indian recipes are an easy find on the internet. But we at the India Heritage Museum wanted to make the session fun by inviting locals from various parts of India to show us their traditional dishes of the region. We took a list of viewers from last week and selected a winner for our raffle. Congratulations to Deepa for winning our stainless steel filter coffee. Before we swing into the IHM kitchen, we'd like to express our gratitude towards the whole community for supporting us in different ways. Some of them uh, volunteered and shared the recipes, while others tuned in to our live programs and were very active throughout the chat box. So thank you to all of those. Though there were some hiccups, glitches, and technical difficulties, like right now, <laughs> we appreciate every one of you who patiently stood by us. Thank you for all of these aunties and fellow peers for coming and sharing some of their culinary skill with us. We'd also like to give a special thank you to Josna auntie, Hema auntie, and Natasha auntie for being strong pillars in the development of this exhibit. We'd also like to give a special thank you to Namaste Grocery, Spice Bazaar, and the Tundur of India for being absolutely instrumental in making your weekly programs come to life. While busy in their professional lives, today's chefs have taken the time to carry forward Indian cooking traditions and give us a glimpse of their recipes. Madhavi Dixit lives in Pittsford since 2001. She has two children, Sonali, a freshman in college, and Ishan, a junior in high school. She loves teaching Hindi to young children and is an integral part of Hindi class at the Hindu temple. For the past 12 years, she works at Cockins Road Middle School, and in her free time, she likes to paint, draw, sew, and try new things. Sunday Sarlashkar lives in Pittsburgh, New York, since 1991, she has a daughter, Radhika, <laughs> who's a senior in high school, and Sandhya works at St. Anne's Community as a Quality Assurance Project Manager. She's also a registered dietitian with 20 years of clinical and management experience. In her spare time, she loves to cook, bake, and work on various creative projects. Those will be our presenters for our live segment today. Now, let's swing into the IHM kitchen and see what's cooking. Do you always eat dessert? Yeah. <laughs> well, you definitely have to have something sweet to end every meal. I mean, you can always just have a bite, right? If you don't want to eat the whole thing. So today I thought about kulfi. Oh, that's my favorite dessert, but I don't know how to make it. So, well, I will show you. Well, first of all, I, I should probably tell everybody what kulfi is. Um, kulfi is a traditional Indian ice cream and it's known for its density. So it's not whipped and churned like traditional ice cream would be. It's actually more fudge-like and um, cold and on a hot summer day, it's the perfect treat. Well, sounds awesome. Let's get started. What do we need? Well, we can go through the ingredients. Um, they, they vary depending on what kind of gulfi you want to make, but today I'll show you a basic gulfi with some nuts. That, that's a traditional way to have it, some saffron and nuts. So we'll start with this end with the liquids. Um, in order to make my gulfi, um, I'm gonna do it again, a very shortcut way, because I try to find every way possible to shorten the time and there's no cooking involved. Like you awesome. don't need a stove, you don't, you don't need to stand in front of the stove and stir anything, it's just you mix and freeze and you're good to go. Great. So the first ingredient we're gonna have is um, some evaporated milk. So you're gonna mix evaporated milk with some condensed milk, which that combination actually 
is replacing taking whole milk and reducing it down on the stove. So that combination right. gives you that same consistency as standing in front of the stove and like just reducing all that milk down. And then you'll actually add some heavy whipping cream. That's what gives it that like um, really um, dense but creamy texture that you all want to love from, from ice cream. So we'll add that into it. And then to make it traditional, what we're going to add is some pistachios. And you can always substitute that with a different nut uh, if you choose. Um, sometimes I like to mix almonds and pistachios, but today we'll just stick with the pistachios. Excellent. And then um, the other ingredient that's crucial, it's that ingredient that you can't really pinpoint, but you know there's something else in there, is cardamom. And a little bit goes a long way. And in addition to cardamom, what complements it well is just a tiny bit of saffron. So this is um, not the amount we're gonna obviously be putting saffron is a very pungent but beautiful um, ingredient, but we only take a few threads of that. Will that change the color? It will actually, and depending on how much you put in it, you can get a lighter yellow to like a very deeper orange yellow. Sounds great. So I guess we'll get right into how to put this together. Um, we've already pre-measured all of our ingredients and you'll be provided with the recipe um, at the conclusion of, of the Zoom. Sounds great. So if we can remember without the actual containers behind them, um, this first ingredient here was the condensed milk. Yep. And I usually start by taking the condensed milk first and putting it into the evaporated milk because this is a thicker consistency. So Corby, would Go you ahead. like to- I'm gonna grab you the spatula to okay. help you put that in. Okay. It really sticks to the bowl, so you wanna make sure that you get everything out of there, especially when you're working with um, a recipe where you need it to change forms. Like in our case, we need it to freeze. So if we don't follow right. exact recipes, then uh, it may not come out that way. Put this off to the side. And then we'll just whisk this together. As you can see, it like will separate initially. So you wanna really work it and get this really well incorporated into the milks. And then Forby, if you wanna slowly pour in the heavy cream while I'm mixing this, it will start to be homogenous for us. See how easy this is? Anyone can do this. It's great when we can just go out and get dessert, but sometimes if we're in a bind and we have all the ingredients, it's easy enough just to whip up at home. So you can see like the condensed milk is practically disappeared into this mixture. And you actually don't want to whip this too much. Um, the amount I'm mixing is probably the most you want to mix because you don't want to introduce a lot of air into this mixture because it will start losing its density um, in the end of the dessert. It'll become more ice cream-like and not that it's bad. I mean, it'll taste delicious in the end, but if you want that fudge-like consistency, you don't want to whip it too much. I know some people, they like it more whipped um, and it's not wrong, you can do that. Um, I just prefer to do it more dense like fudge. Great, so pretty much we got all that mixed in together. Just move this off to the side. And then at this point, you've got your base. It's your base for your dessert and you can introduce anything into this. I've actually made chocolate gulfi before, which turns out delicious. And you really don't need a measurement for that. You can just add some um, ganache that you melt and just introduce it into this mixture. You can just put little itty bitty chocolate chips into it. You can actually even throw your nuts into it. I find I don't like to throw my nuts into this because they all seem to, like go into different places, I can control every portion to have the nuts if I put it directly into the molds and I'll show you how to do that later. So for my recipe here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a pinch of cardamom in here. A little bit goes a long way. I would say about half a teaspoon is what I am comfortable using in this amount right here. So I'll just put that in there. And um, the saffron, some people will tell you they can go ahead and throw it directly in here. I find that if you bloom it a little bit, it really brings out the flavor. And in order to bloom it, I just add a little bit of this mixture back into this bowl and we'll just microwave it for about right, 10 seconds. A spoon. So you can just scoop a little bit out here and that's plenty. You just need enough to kind of coat those strands. 
And I'm gonna put this in the microwave now for 15 seconds. Okay, I'm back. I've warmed this up for about 10 seconds and it's bloomed beautifully with a golden color. All right, that sounds great. It, you can go ahead and, and put that right into our master mix here and you can use this spoon to get everything out. The only thing you don't want to introduce into this is our natural instinct could be just to get some water, rinse it out and put it in here, but you don't want to introduce any water into this. It will change the whole consistency, consistency of the whole um, dessert in the end. So you can just use the heavy cream back and forth. I think you got most of that out there. So when you put it into the master mix, of course, you don't see it very yellow. So at this point, you can make a judgment call that if you would like your dessert to be more colorful, you can add a little bit more to it, but you also wanna be cautious because it will change the taste as well and it will become very saffron heavy and some people may not like that. Okay, well, Show me about your beautiful molds. Okay, well, there's um, a very simple, there's ver various ways you can make the kulfi. Um, before I, I had my little mold here, I used to just do it in a casserole dish and I would just literally take this and pour it into a, like a rectangular um, glass casserole and then freeze it and the next day just cut it into squares. But then I thought, oh, it'd be fun to actually have like little molds. So then I got this, it's actually an egg, um, an egg mold and it was was supposed to be for the instant pot but i have repurposed this little gadget so many times and we're going to make our goofy in here and if you don't have that you don't have the right casserole you can actually use um plastic cups i find that using the paper dixie cups um sometimes it sticks to it when you take it out of the freezer so i like these plastic cups because it comes out very nicely so today we will go ahead and use our mold. So before I start, I usually like to put a little bit of the pistachios at the bottom of each Great. of those so we can portion control that. Great. And again, this varies depending on if you like it nut heavy or just like as a garnish. How do you like yours, Forbes? I like my nut heavy. So. <laughs> so you know what we'll do for you since we're making this for you today is that we'll not only put some at the bottom, after we pour some in there, we can also top it so you'll have some sandwich. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> you were talking about molds and it reminds me of my mom when we were kids. She used to use those old ice cream pop molds that you can get. Yes, and I remember my mom using those too. And actually, I should probably go and get them from her because I'm sure she doesn't use them that often. <laughs> so um, it was just one less gadget to, to have in, in the, the kitchen. House. But I mean, this little thing works just fine. And until recently, the cups work perfectly. Great. So now we're just going to carefully um, mix it one more time because things may start to settle again in here and you wanna make sure the condensed milk is homogenous again. And it looks like it is. You don't see any clumps in here, which is exactly what you want to see. And for the molds, I like to only go about halfway up into each of the molds because it will expand just a bit whenever it freezes. So you wanna make sure that, you know, it stands nicely in each mold. So that's about what I do. And also, you know, you can portion control it. Sometimes if you're making it for kids, you don't wanna give them too much. So it's nice to just make them less, but sometimes I've made them into big cups when I'm doing it for like an adult get together. So the nuts will naturally rise back up as you're pouring this, but somehow I feel like they do settle down. And I just think it's prettier whenever I'm putting them into each mold at the bottom. I should have done the middle first. There we go. So look how pretty that looks. And then you can go ahead and put more nuts since you, you nuts. like more nuts in there. I always love the color. Yeah, it's beautiful. With the saffron and the green pistachio, it just looks wonderful. Yep. It smells amazing. Yeah, so I'm gonna teach you a little trick instead of just putting the popsicle stick in there because if, obviously okay. if you put it in there, it's just gonna flop to the side, right? So if you grab that foil over there and cover this entire mold, just make it as hot as you can around it. And I'm gonna grab a knife while you do that. Something better than a knife. We can, can repurpose this, this spatula on the back end. Okay. And um, you can kind of see where the molds are, right? So if you find like the center 
of every mold and just give it a, a little poke. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I use a popsicle stick directly to do it, it rips. So I'm gonna show you a quick little trick. Um, when you put the foil on here, you go ahead and make a tiny little insert with a sharp knife so that you can easily insert the popsicle sticks in there. Sounds great. Perfect. So once all the sticks are in here, you are ready to go ahead and freeze it. And one thing I like to show you is that um, when you're using a mold sometimes, especially a silicone mold, it tends to shift a lot as you're carrying it. And if your freezer looks like mine, there's so much in there and it's hard to find like a, a plateau where you need to put it. So I usually put it onto a, a little metal plate so that when you're lifting it, you can steadily lift Great. it and put it right into the freezer. So this is what so this is what the final This is what the final product would look like. So on to our next recipe. First of all, we'd like to thank Purvi Auntie and Nisha Auntie for showing us how to make kulfi. Now we're going to learn from Rita Auntie and Josna Auntie how to make barfi. Rita Auntie has been in Rochester for a long time and enjoys using her culinary skills to make dishes and bring them to family gatherings, such as the one she'll be showing us today. She's made this dish very in different flavors, such as coconut, almond, pistachio, hazelnut, and other edible floral flavors. Josna Auntie, Josna Bonnery, moved to Rochester in 1997 and has been living with her husband, Rao, and daughter, Nibi, who is now in Virginia. She's a geriatrician by profession and works at the Jewish home of Rochester. Josta is passionate about Indian classical dancing and currently keeping busy with yoga and meditative practices. Besides being the executive director of the India Heritage Museum, she volunteers her time at the MK Gandhi Institute of Nonviolence, Mental Health Association, and Hindu Heritage Summer Camp. She is delighted to present with a dear friend one of her favorite Indian desserts. Let's see how to make barfi. Hello, my name is Rida. Today I'll be showing you milk fudge made with almonds and pistachios. Hi, this is Jyotsna. So Rita, is this the paneer fudge that I've been having for the last 15 years in my Ganesh pujas? Yes, it is. This is the paneer fudge made out of uh, milk, curdled milk. Wow, it looks so difficult to make. Is it really that hard to make? The only hardest thing here is to make paneer out of milk. That's the only thing. So we actually learn how to make paneer in the Instapot in a very easy way. So I would really ask everyone to go and check out our session on paneer making. So these are the ingredients we're going to need. First, we are going to need the paneer, which is made out of the milk, curdled milk, almond powder, or any nut powder is good. This is the same paneer, but roasted about 15 minutes on a medium flame. And then there is purified butter, which is ghee, uh, some slivered almonds for decoration, yellow food color. And uh, these are just the seeds of cardamom. I wanted to show you guys that these are the ones that I have ground. And then this is saffron. And then there is uh, condensed, sweetened condensed milk. Rita, what are some of the tools you have here to make the paneer fudge? So the most important is the nonstick rolling pin. Uh, if you are using nonstick, you won't need the saran wrap, but you, because it's going to be a sticky fudge, you do need the saran wrap and a cutting board underneath it. I have wrapped the cutting board up with the saran wrap. Also to grind cardamom, I have used this little mortar and pestle. I sometimes use this cookie cutter, kind of a stamp, and these are the molds that I have from India. And I will show you this one opens up like this. And then this is the candy mold. Hmm. And you can also use the cookie cutter. Very nice. So you can get a lot of different shapes yes. with the same base of the fudge. Yes. Okay, nice. 
So Rita, this is the paneer that came from the Instapot, but if I remember correctly, we used vinegar in the Instapot to make the curdled uh, milk and paneer. How do you get the flavor of the vinegar out of the paneer? So to get the flavor out of uh, the paneer, any uh, vinegar or lemon juice, whatever you use, you do need to line a sieve or a strainer with mm -hmm. a cheesecloth. And the paneer goes in that cheesecloth, and then you take it to the sink. You um, run some fresh tap water okay. and wash the paneer really well three or four times. Okay. 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 And then you need to hang it okay. overnight. So hang it on a kitchen counter, or you know, uh, so that there is a big bowl that has that collects the whey. And uh, this is the paneer that you get out of three gallons, I mean, sorry, one gallon of milk, you get three cups of paneer. Oh, wow, okay, yes. so that's really good. So what are we doing here now, Rita? So first we are going to roast the raw paneer, and for that you need to put three, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of ghee mm -hmm. in the nonstick pan. Make sure that you are using nonstick pan. And then we crumble this paneer a little bit with the hands, mm -hmm. and roasted for about 15 minutes or so okay. and it has to be very dry after roasting it. Okay. So this is how you crumble it. So you're basically and losing the moisture and getting it more dried so it, it can actually make a form. Correct, yes. It will be like a coarse breadcrumb. Okay coarsely ground breadcrumb. And did you say it will be on high? No, plane? medium. 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 Okay. Yes. And then medium flame. And then we are going to roast this for about 15 minutes. Okay. So it's been 15 minutes. We roasted the paneer for 15 minutes. And this is how it turns out, uh, kind of crumbly, no moisture in it at all. And I see it kind of looks like a really nice light yellow color. Yes, it does have a yellowish tint because of roasting. So what else are we going to be blending today, Rita, with the paneer? Okay, so the next step after you roast the paneer is going to be blending all the paneer that you roasted in the food processor along with um, one can, a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. And you just want to grind it, process it for about one minute, one to two minutes. And so that is one can of condensed milk. And then all we need to do is the lid for the, is process it for about one minute. So about halfway down this process, we do need to stir this uh, mixture a little bit. So it has been about one minute. I processed it for one minute. And now I need to stir it a little bit and add one teaspoon of, half a teaspoon actually, of uh, ground cardamom and also about half a teaspoon of saffron. And then process it again for a minute on a high uh, speed. Okay, so after processing it for another minute, this is what it's going to look like. It will be a smooth um, pancake type of batter. Slightly uh, grainy, but this is how runny it should be. So after processing the mixture for about two minutes, I have transferred it into the same pan, the nonstick pan, that I used earlier to roast the paneer. And now this process will take about 15 minutes to get it to about the mashed potato type of consistency. That's what you need to get. And it takes only about 15 minutes at, um, on a medium heat, so medium flame. And just continuously stir it though. You don't want to leave it unattended. You just want to continuously stir it, okay? 
So, this is a pistachio uh, fudge that I made earlier and I am going to show you how I uh, mold these uh, you know the fudge mixture into these molds that I got from India and there are different shapes. There is this one which is like a laddu or modak, then there is the apple shape and there is a mango shape and all you do is stuff these molds with the mixture. So, I am going to do that and I will show you how. So, you um, stuff it really well, press it close it and try to push it down as much as you can and uh, it has to be pretty solid inside. And once you do that, you just open it up and there is your modak and you just finish the sides a little bit because it kind of oozes out a little bit. So, you finish it and this is what it looks like. I will show you a mango shape. Okay, and this is the mango. And I am also going to show you the cookie stamp. And all these tools are available online on Amazon. And all you do is press it, press it really hard and this becomes like a pera we call it. And this is what it looks like. Then sometimes I also use the candy molds. And there are so many different shapes as you can see here. And the candy molds, you just stuff the candy mold with the mixture. And then just push it out. So, this is what it looks like. So, there are different shapes that I have made in the past for different occasions. So, I have made this, um, this fudge at several different family occasions of ours such as my son's wedding. I made about 200 boxes. I just wanted to demonstrate how I use these um, mitais or these pieces uh, that are molded sort of. And this is how it looks. You, this is a gift box. We, I made about 200 of these. And at our Bhatt family's uh, gatherings, I make these frequently. And um, it seems to be a hit with the family. But this is how you would uh, give or present as a gift to your guests. So, this is what the mixture looks like after roasting it for about 15 minutes. And then we go ahead and add one cup of almond powder or the powder, nut powder of your choice. You can just dump it or do I need yes. to like, okay. Yeah, you just mix it after you turn the stove off. Mm. You just mix it in here for a minute or so and it will become even um, drier than what this is right now. So, this, the mixture was kind of like mashed potato consistency mm -hmm. and now it will become even harder after mixing the powder. Oh my god, I can smell the cardamom and the saffron and it just looks so delicious. <laughs> yeah, and all we need to do after we mix it really well is either mold the shapes or you can even uh, flatten it mm -hmm. on a saran wrap. Oh nice, that's really creative.
Thank you. So now that we have the paneer mixture all cooled down, what are you doing with two different flavors here, Rita? So what I'm going to make is the, the squares mm -hmm. of this paneer fudge. And I'm going to put this pistachio fudge at the bottom and put the almond layer on top of that. Mm -hmm. Both of them need to be at the same temperature. Okay. If one is warmer than the other, then they won't um, be, you won't be able to see the layers. And they both have to be about the same size as about well? About the same size balls, okay. yes. You just flatten them a little bit. Okay. And then you, I have the saran wrap underneath it. Okay. I'm going to make the saran wraps um, envelope sort of. Mm and cover all four sides. You need to seal all four sides okay. so really well. It doesn't have to well. be airtight. It doesn't have to be airtight, okay. but um, the air bubbles are not going to make it look good. Okay. So you all do right. want to make sure there are no air bubbles in there. And then all you do is flatten them a little bit with your hands. Okay. And then you use the rolling pin to roll oh. both the layers. Oh, wow. This is yes. really interesting. And then you get the two layers, one over top of the other. Right, right. Oh. So see, because this side was slightly open, right. okay. so it uh, came out a little bit. Okay. Yes, but basically the idea is to have a flat two-layer uh, fudge square mm -hmm. and then you cut the pieces with make sure it's a plastic knife otherwise it's a little bit sticky okay so and then you can decorate these squares with almond pieces or pistachio pieces and can you like just roll them into like little rolls yes yep you can okay. do that too you can make almond pistachio rolls and let me make even squares. This is the traditional uh, fudge shape. Yeah, that's right. Can and you see so, a piece to see how that yes. looks? Oh yes, my so God. this is what, and you can kind of see the double layer here. I'll show you another better looking piece and you can finish you know uh, the sides like this by tapping them a little bit hmm. yes and then you can garnish it with some almonds like you yep. said yep you can, can put a little sliver of almond in the middle or a little piece of pistachio in the middle My mouth is watering. Now we're going to make some more dishes in the kitchen live with Sandhya and Madhvi. So let's see what's cooking in the IHM kitchen right now. Hi, I'm Sandhya. And I'm Madhvi. And I'm, we are here to show you today the Thilgul. Um, as the name suggests, Thil is uh, sesame and Gul is um, uh, jaggery. And till gul is celebrated or it's used uh, during the month of uh, December, January. And it's, it's a, there's a reason why we use so much during that time. Um, and not only just one place, like I think in Maharashtra, we say till gul ya, any gol gol bol. That means you take till gul and talk sweet. So that is what it is. But it's not just Maharashtra. In other states too, they celebrate... Uh, uh, the in the month of uh, January we celebrate a festival called Makara Sankranti, and during that time this is a very popular dish to make. And people in different states make in different varieties. Uh, there is you can have till good till ladu, and this is uh, chiki. It's the chiki, and this is another one is called gajak. Uh, it's displayed here. This is basically just till, uh, till and um, whipped uh, jaggery and made it into a feast shape. 
And then if you go to down south to Karnataka, this is another form of kilgul where everything is just mixed together and made it roasted and made it put together, that's all. Um, and then we are coming to uh, another one, which is called Thilwadi, uh, Thilgulwadi. Um, this is what we are going to demonstrate today. So if I want to show you more a little bit about that, it's something is equivalent to what the, we use the granola bars here. It's full of, um, full of like um, nuts and um, all yeah, the, grains stuff. So in Tilwari is the same thing. There is, uh, how about you Sandhya? Maybe you wanna okay. go ahead. Sandhya is going to demonstrate us uh, how to make the Tilwari. Uh, so she has everything ready. Um, Sandhya, what is the okay. process? Like, what do you do? Okay, uh, as Madhavi said, uh, tilwari is basically a combination of jaggery, sesame, and I'm going to do a slight variation of it, but I'll talk about these two ingredients first. Uh, jaggery, um, most of you know jaggery is unrefined sugar, and uh, this is manufactured like uh, I think Maharashtra is the largest manufacturer of jaggery in the world. So it yeah. is it is manufactured in Maharashtra, and you will see that yes. a lot of dishes are prepared with jaggery, and sugar is substituted for jaggery. So Sandhya, if you see, it yes. says uh, Kolapuri jag jaggery. And there's a place in Maharashtra it's called Kolapur. And if you go there, all you can smell is sugarcane <laughs> and sugar and the factories. There are a lot of, of sugarcane factories yes. in uh, Kolapur. <laughs> yes. uh, so jaggery is uh, a little bit on jaggery. I would like to uh, tell everyone is uh, this being unrefined sugar, it has some nutritional content to it. So it is not empty calories uh, like sugar. Uh, this has this is rich in iron, magnesium, and uh, sesame. Sesame is very well known in the Middle Eastern dishes. Tahini is used uh, in India. Sesame is used in various dishes. It's not used on its own except for tilwadi. So usually til is only used in tilwadis in larger portions. Uh, til comes in three varieties. You have black till, white till, and these are the traditional tills. The original till comes, which is not too white. Somewhat and you like get them at the Indian like, yeah. grocery store. They're rich in protein. These are oil seeds. So till is also very nutritious. It is rich in protein, magnesium, manganese, calcium, iron, so it's a very nutritious oil seed. Uh, let's see how we do tilwari. Uh, for tilwari, you're going to need, uh, you'll get the recipe on the internet. Uh, you'll, you'll use sesame seeds. I have your roasted and powdered uh, sesame seeds. So uh, this, yeah. yeah. This is the sesame seed seeds. And when yes. you roasted it and you made powder, it looked yes. like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Peanuts. Roasted peanuts, ground them, same, uh, desiccated coconut. I have roasted and ground desiccated coconut. I have jaggery. If you notice, the jaggery is lighter in color. So it depends how uh, it is molded. Sometimes it comes a little lighter. This is the color which is the most desired color. Mm -hmm. um, I have cardamom powder. And I have a little bit of ghee to coat the pan uh, and a little bit of oil to make the wadi. So why don't we go to the gas stop and do the wadi? Should I start? So uh, what we'll need to do first is uh, we'll have to mix these ingredients together. Coconut, sesame, and ground peanuts. I ground them in this mini mixer so that they get, uh, I can get a fine powder out of it. So I'm going to mix this. And Madhavi, do you want to add some uh, cardamom powder? Cardamom powder, sure. 
one four teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? Yeah. So you want to mix this and set it aside. Make sure that there aren't any lumps because sometimes uh, when you are grinding oil seeds, they tend to uh, separate a little bit of it, oil from it. So just make sure you remove all the lumps. Now I'm turning the heat on. So is that uh, one cup uh, of uh, jaggery, Sandhya? Uh, this is one and one fourth. One and one fourth. Yeah. Okay. So to it, I'm adding oil, mm -hmm. water, little bit. Now this is going to start making melting. And as always, all of the recipes you see today will be provided by email after the program. So, so when you're using jaggery, you do not need to worry about the, the consistency of the jaggery syrup. Usually when you're making any other bars using sugar, uh, they usually specify make it two thread consistency or three thread for jaggery since it's unrefined sugar it's going to mold pretty quickly so the key is making sure uh, if the jaggery is dry you add uh, I added two tablespoons of water uh, you add a little bit of more water just go teaspoon at a time I wouldn't add much um, add water let it melt once it starts fluffing, if you see on the sides, it's starting to fluff and the jaggery is melting. Oh, I can smell it also. Yeah. It's smelling. So when it starts melting, because it's unrefined sugar, you might have a few undesired things in it. Uh, this is a hay stalk. So you can remove it. But okay. once it comes to this consistency, you turn so it the was gas about off. one or two minutes, Sandhya. That's less than, yeah, less than a minute. Yeah. It's such a short, short yeah. recipe. You just yeah. add this. So be make sure be that you quick. keep everything ready yeah. to mix it. Yeah, that's a key. Be quick. Yeah. Once you mix it together, pour it in a grease tray. I'm keeping it on the hot uh, hot plate so that it mixes well, it stays warm. See, I'm put, it gathers very fast. As I said, you don't need to worry about the syrup. It's going to mold well. Collect it. This is like a homemade granola bar. <laughs> yeah, this is a very wholesome, uh, wholesome way to make your own bars at home because you're not adding any uh, high fructose corn syrup or any of the undesired additives that are added to make the bars. So I'm going to do this. Then I also have uh, this ladle. Yeah, I noticed that, that you put I have some, greased huh? this so I can press it. It is so quick to make. It takes more time to put the ingredients together. The other way that it's done in India is they grease a backside of a katori. This is a small stainless steel bowl and they go like this. Now, if you want, you can put some uh, unroasted uh, grated coconut over it and press it again. This is a very sure shot recipe to try out. Now you set this aside, let it cool for 10, 15 minutes. Actually, uh, I can feel that they are almost ready. I can show you that they will cut through. We'll keep them aside. 
Now you can do, I'm doing one inch squares. Uh, the squares that I did yesterday on the other dish, they're slightly bigger. See, Madhuvi, I'm not, I'm not doing a good job right now. No, it's okay. It's perfect still. <laughs> so if you let it cool, they will cut into nice crisp edges. So I'm going to wait. It's still warm. It's still a little yeah. hot. Yeah. Yeah. So Sandhya, I had a question. Like, How did you get this big block of jaggery to look like the grated form, the way you... Used. Okay, uh, there's a trick to cutting jaggery. It, come, it is quite hard. So you have to uh, put it on a chopping board and scrape it with a knife. Sometimes people grate it to make this dish. Um, an easy way, uh, my, my trick, I put it in the microwave for 30 seconds mm -hmm. to soften it. Mm -hmm. And then it's an easy cut. Okay, okay, good. Good to know. These are some tricks that you yep. it helps. Even cardamom, you coffee. get whole cardamom uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. So um, you can peel the cardamom, get the seeds out, roast them a little bit, and then pound them in the in mortal the pestle. Mortal pestle. Okay. And that's how you make the cardamom powder. Yeah, I was also wondering about the nutritional benefits of uh, the till. Uh, it is usually eaten during the uh, winter months, right? It's you know, till and uh, good, good in yeah. Ayurveda is considered to be uh, warming foods, so that's why they are more eaten more in, in the, the winter. winter months. Yes. Okay, that's right. So yes. it gives us the yes. uh, the body warmth right. needed in the winter right. times. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we need to move on to the next recipe, right? Okay. Yes. So the. Uh, Okay, I just wanted to show you my finished product here. This is the tilwari I made yesterday. <laughs> so I'm getting thirsty. You just want to make a drink? Yes. So we are going to show you today how to make kokum drink. Mm. It is also called as solkari. Um, kokum. Kokum is a fruit which is uh, typically found uh, on the western side of India. It's, uh, the, I was looking for the English name for kokum and uh, couldn't find one. It's called uh, Garcia Indica and it's hmm. from the Mangosteen family. So beyond that, I don't know much about <laughs> it, but the fruit itself, it's, look, it's the size of an apricot and it has small seeds inside, and it's a sour fruit. And this fruit is used as an alternate to using tamarind or any souring agent like lemon. And so on. In Indian cooking. Okay. So okay. how do we start? So uh, what we're going to need today to make this is coconut milk. And in India, they usually have coconut trees in their houses. <laughs> so they uh, get a coconut, scrape it, Grind it and strain the milk out of it. So that coconut milk. It's a laborious process. <laughs> yes, but you cannot compare that with this can. But to make it easier, we are, I use the canned milk. Now you have varieties of canned coconut milk. Uh, you have this regular. Uh, you also get reduced. There's a fresh variety. So you could use any of them. The only thing is, if you are using a fresh coconut, the amount of water you add to make the drink is going to be different than using a canned one. Okay. So you want to make Radhika? Sure, I can help. Okay. Uh, so to make this, I need a paper napkin. To make this, uh, we're going to use uh, one cup of uh, coconut milk. I measured the one cup and one cup of water. Mix, yeah, mix it together. Now the canned coconut milk is many times lumpy. 
So make sure you blend it. I have blended this ahead of time. I wanted to make it a very easy recipe. So uh, I blended it. Now to it, add uh, cumin powder. How much? A, pinch. a pinch. You don't need a lot. Salt to taste. Oh, I'll let pinch. you do that one. Okay, keep it down. <laughs> Little bit of salt. Then we are going to use kokum. The kokum I'm going to use is an extract of kokum. I got this as well as this from Namaste. So many times these ingredients are available these days at our Indian grocery stores. So any Indian grocery store would work. Spices are as well. So using the extract is very easy. But if you're not using the extract, typically we use these kokum. You take three or four of these, soak them for four uh, hours in water, and then you squeeze them and you get this extract. One sec, I'll, I should have pulled it out. No, it's easy. So what are other drinks you can make with kokum? Well, you can make a sharbat like lemonade with mm. kokum. People use kokum to make kokum chutney. They add it to their dals. Mm -hmm. um, so I need a tablespoon. I'll pour it so that hold it closer to it. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of kokum. And if you see the color of kokum is purplish, so it's going to give a nice pink, pinkish purplish color to the drink. There's several variations of this drink. Um, some places they add sugar to sweeten and reduce the tartness of kokum. Uh, some people, they give a seasoning of hot oil with uh, cumin and garlic to it. Uh, I, I like color. this, yeah. I like this simple version uh, where you're just mixing the two ingredients. I don't add sugar. I have added less of this so that there's not much of tartness to it. Yeah, the sweetness uh, of coconut milk itself uh, is enough, enough for yeah. that. Yeah. So add a little bit of chopped uh, coriander as a garnish, stir it. You can use this to stir it in or use the spoon. And this drink is typically, you know, it's served with rice in India. It is also uh, served in the summer as just a drink and uh, it's served in smaller quantities because it's coconut milk. Right. So I'm just, just so, so that it looks good, we are pouring it in a bigger glass today. So while we enjoy this drink, we have a special guest to talk about Ayachan's next exhibit. So I would like to invite Himanti to come and join us. Hello. And why don't you taste this? Yeah, go ahead. Tell it's us how it is. gluten free. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, yummy. I can smell the coconut in that. So our next exhibit is going to be uh, beans and um, fabrics of India. Um, it's going to be um, in person so people can come and see the um, exhibit. It's going to be focused more on the weaves, the various hand, hand loom fabrics of India. Almost every state has um, its own weaving societies and they make saris. So that Sari is a Patola Sari, which is a yeah. specialty of Maharashtra. And this is Narayan no, Kachari. this is Gujarat. This Actually, is Gujarat. Gujarat, okay. So that is a different weaving process for that. And this is Narayan Pet, which is also from the Western region. And this is a Banarasi Sari, which is very um, ornate and uh, very um, colorful. And it has silk weaving in it. And I'm wearing a cotton Sari, which is also um, hand woven. So please come to the exhibit. Um, it's on uh, starts on April 30th and runs till June 5th. It's on Saturdays and Sundays from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, thank you so much for joining you. us. Thank you. We have another special yeah. guest. So as uh, the executive director of the India Heritage Museum, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the wonderful youth leaders that led this exhibit. Rohan Vyas and Radhika Sarlashkar. Rohan is behind the camera. Ro Rohan is behind the camera like he always is. Maybe he should turn the camera around so he can quickly show. 
and say <laughs> hi. hi. Yes, that's nice, Rohan. <clears throat> Uh, I would also like to take uh, the opportunity to say thank you to each and every volunteer who helped uh, this exhibit actually happen. Everybody took time to come here, do some pre-recording, come back again for the live presentation. So this was really a community event which was put together with extreme love for the community and for Indian cooking and to showcase Indian heritage. And like Hema was talking about, Hema and other committee members are working very hard for the upcoming exhibit for the weaves uh, and fabrics of India. And we actually procured a lot of fabrics from India. Hema and Rao, when they went to India, actually brought fabrics from India. So these are all original fabrics with and stories more. of weavers who actually, uh, you know, weave those fabrics. So it will be- more a, fabrics are coming. And more fabrics are coming. So yes, this will be something that is really, um, precious and you know really will showcase the Indian heritage. So we invite you all to come for the exhibit. Thank you. And again, the dates. Oh, the dates. Uh, April thirtieth through June fifth on Saturdays and Sundays, twelve to five p.m. It's a um, you can come to the India Heritage Museum, which is located in the India Community Center, and uh, you would see start seeing flyers all around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Rohan and I, I'd like to thank you for joining us for the past six weekends. We really think it's an honor. Thank you for having us. We've had so much fun putting this together, meeting new people, learning new recipes, and we hope you come and see the weeds exhibit. I'm excited for it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.